Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again and to a new video. So today there is no tutorial, but I want to actually take care and I want to actually give a good look to a distribution which I think is really underrated and that is OpenSUSE. So I've installed it actually here on my main machine. Uh, you can see here on my desktop, this is the flagship version, which is the KDE version of OpenSUSE. But before getting started and dive a little bit deeper into the distribution itself, I wanted to look a little bit also at the historical uh, context of this uh, distribution, which as you can see here on the Wikipedia, I will leave a link to the video description below here. Uh, it all began in 1992, as you can see here on the website, uh, from a company called SUSE. SUSE or S-U-S-E stands actually for Software und System Entwicklung. This is German for Software and Systems Development. And as you can see here, it has been founded in 1992. I remember this because in those days uh, I was new to Linux and that was, I think, the first distribution which I tried and it didn't work for me. It was too complex, so I gave up, but it was in those days. And, uh, you know, reading this actually, it reminds me of those days when I was trying this out. And uh, uh, as you can see here, it was actually the first company to market Linux for the enterprise. So it was called then SUSE Linux Enterprise. And nowadays is also the primary sponsor of the community supported open SUSE project, which is the distribution I installed on this machine. And it's the distribution we know the most actually in the Linux community. Now SUSE Enterprise Linux has a long history, which began in 1992. And it started off with the collaboration with Slackware, also for the translation of the distribution. And it's based in Germany. As you can see also here on the photo, the headquarters are now in Nuremberg. Now, there have been several acquisitions uh, of SUSE in the last years, and you can read through here the history and the acquisitions by Novel, Attachmate, and so on. The interesting parallel that we can make here with OpenSUSE is that OpenSUSE has two uh, variants. One is Tumbleweed, which is the one I have installed here. Tumbleweed is the rolling release of OpenSUSE. And there is also the Leap version. The Leap version is not a rolling release. And as you can see here, it says also here in the Wikipedia, while the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed variation is an upstream distribution for both the Leap variation and SUSE Linux Enterprise distribution, its branded Leap variant is part of a direct upgrade path to the Enterprise version, which effectively makes OpenSUSE Leap a non-commercial version of its Enterprise product. As much as CentOS was the free version of RHEL, basically, and as much as Tumbleweed is Fedora for RHEL. So just to have this in context and to know actually how this distribution is structured. So SUSE Linux Enterprise is actually the main sponsor for OpenSUSE. And here you can read all about the history of SUSE Linux Enterprise as well. So now on to the distribution. I installed here Tumbleweed. And let me close here the browser window and open up the terminal. Now, this is shipping with the uh, flagship uh, desktop environment, which is KDE, but during the installation, you can choose also to install uh, GNOME and a generic desktop environment, if I'm not mistaken. Then once you install the distribution, you have several choices to install also other uh, desktop environments and the window manager like Sway, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now, the package manager for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as also for OpenSUSE Leap, of course, is Zipper. So we can use zipper to update our system on the terminal you know the same we can do with uh, yum on rail or uh, dnf on fedora or pacman on arch linux or apt on ubuntu or debian based distributions so for example to update my system here i could type in sudo zipper update and hit enter. I'm going to be asked for my sudo password here. And it's going to check for the repositories. And now there is nothing else to do because it's up to date. But you can see if I type in here uname dash r, we are here on one of the latest kernels. Now, I think the latest kernel which came out on Arch a few days ago was the 11.7, but I'm not 100% positive there. At the time of this recording, Tumbleweeds offers now uh, 5.11.6, which is anyway one of the latest kernels. So everything is fairly familiar here on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but what makes this distribution actually special uh, compared to other distributions? Now, there are several features that makes this distribution really special. One of them is that it uses by default the ButterFS file system and Snapper. So when you install this distribution by default, it's going to install it with the ButterFS file system, creating several sub volumes, which I'm going to show you in a sec, and using Snapper to create snapshots. 
So this is one of the marquees uh, of the OpenSUSE uh, distribution. And the other big feature of this distribution is a tool called YAST. YAST stands for yet another setup tool. And uh, it's really an amazing tool. I really find it very useful and it's really well put together. Now let me close here the terminal and open up the system preferences here. Now, when you open up the system preferences, these are the KDE system preference, and they just look different because um, the distribution set them up here with an icon view instead of a sidebar view. If I switch to sidebar view here, you will see this is the typical KDE um, system preference, but uh, OpenSUSE shipped it with uh, the icon view. That's why it looks a little different, but you have the usual options here to uh, you know, to set up your KDE desktop environment. Now, before I get started here with the YAS module, let me just tell you something about KDE in general, which actually I found out now that I installed KDE now since a while. I have a dual setup monitor here with a 4K and a 1080p display. And uh, when I installed KDE now, uh, which is actually, I think, the latest version available, if I'm not mistaken, you can see here KDE Plasma version 5.21.2. So, of course, you have to go in, if you have a 4K monitor, you know, you have to go into the preferences here, into displays, and then choose the 4K display here, and global scale to 200%, and click apply. But then you notice that there are a few things which are not properly scaled. For example, if I right-click here on the menu, normally these icons are small, uh, the icons also here remain small. And so there are a couple of things there that you need to adjust. Now, I tried actually to use the environment variable. I think it was plasma use QT uh, scaling, uh, which I found, I think, on the ArchWiki and put that into the dot profile um, uh, file in your uh, system here and then reboot. And then everything scales well. But uh, what happens there is that the geometry of QT and the, and the geometry of Plasma gets mixed up. And I couldn't get my dual monitor set up actually to work correctly. So if you have that, and if you are encountering the same problem, don't scale the icons like that. Just go into the KD settings, to into the icon settings, which is right here under appearance and then icons and then configure icon sizes directly from here then it's going to work absolutely fine also with x work because otherwise with the two geometry um, confusing each other i couldn't get the uh, resolution displayed correctly on reboots um, between my 4k monitor and my 1080p monitor so just a heads up there if you are encountering the same problem now having said that let's go back here to the settings and open up yast so to use yast you, you need to authenticate so I'm going to do that very quickly here. And so let's have a good look here at the ass. So this is an amazing module. This is something that actually it's really uh, well implemented. And, um, you know, I love to maintain my system using the terminal. This is how I learned uh, also when I did the certification. But uh, as a sysadmin, it's also nice to see that there are certain GUI tools like this one, which uh, are really well put together. I really, I really like it. Now, I remember in the past, actually, some admins didn't like this tool because it used to break actually uh, custom configurations and uh, i think that was addressed now since some years already and now it should be fine uh, but if you look at this thing it's amazing i mean we have here on the side the categories which are displayed actually here in bold so by clicking here we're basically just scrolling through the categories here so nothing Nothing really interesting here, but the interesting, of course, the interesting part is in the middle. So this, for example, it's something uh, for the software repositories and software management. So when you install OpenSUSE, the thing I recommend you to do immediately, the first thing I recommend you to do is to go to the software repositories and check for adding repositories and go to the community repositories here and click next and check the Pac-Man repositories. Now it sounds Pac-Man is not Arch, um, uh, but it's called Pac-Man anyway. And these are community repositories which allow you to have much more packages available from the community. So more themes, also icons and many other good stuff. So you can install them from here or from the terminal. I did from the terminal actually, not from here, but uh, you can install them from here as well. And if you have a machine with NVIDIA graphic drivers, for example, uh, then you can check also the NVIDIA graphics drivers here repository to get the proprietary driver. They couldn't put this, of course, in the installation because the graphic drivers for NVIDIA are not open source. So you need to install them manually like this. So this is one thing that I definitely recommend you to do. Then once you've done that, um, you can go to the software management here. 
And uh, you can basically search here for your software. So for example, if I type in, in here icon, just an example, uh, you have a list here of packages that may or may not contain icons, but I can see, for example, here, there is the arc icon theme, and there is the finds icon theme, there is the elementary icon theme, and so on. So it's it's a very uh, you know basic search of packages that you can do. Now, you can also narrow down the search here by RPM provides and RPM requires, because OpenSUSE is using RPM packages, like Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and CentOS, of course. Um, and you can narrow down the search with these filters. Now, uh, another very, very interesting um, way to search for packages here is with the patterns. Now, this is where things get really interesting because as you can see here, this installed by default with the KD desktop environment, but you can install also here uh, GNOME with Wayland or Xorg. You have the mark here for Wayland and Xorg as well. You can install the XFC desktop environment. You can install Cinnamon, LXDE, LXQT. You can install Sway which I'm going to show you afterwards. You can install Enlightenment, the Mate desktop environments. And then you have some other categories here for the desktop. So let me actually uh, expand this a little bit. So desktop functions. Well, I have already packages here for multimedia. These were pre-installed. Uh, Office Suite comes already pre-installed as well. Uh, we have also some other graphic tools, which are not pre-installed by default here, but you can go ahead and install them if you want. You have games, uh, you have technical writings. So if you click here, you see what packages are available. And if you choose some of these by clicking this, then you click accept, they're going to be installed. And then you can go down here to the server functions. Now, this is really nice because you can install here, for example, any package or any group of packages that you might need for your server if you are running a server. So for example, file server here, we have already some of these packages available. Like for example, the Samba client is already there. The Samba server is already running, but it's not configured. You need to configure this, of course. But you have other packages as well uh, that you can install here. For example, the very secure FTPD daemon is also here if you want to install that. And so on. You can install a full print server. You can install a full mail server. You can install a full DHCP and DNS server if you want. So it's, it's very practical to have uh, these packages grouped like this. And you can just click them and install them if you want. And then under here, if you are a developer, you can also choose here to install packages of group of packages uh, for development, whether it's a GNOME development, KDE development, and so on. You have a lot of choices here. We have Perl development, Python 3 development, Qt5 development, and so on. And then we have also some base technologies. Now, this is also very interesting. I already selected here the KVM virtualization host and tools. And I already installed it. I'm going to show you afterwards uh, how it works. But you can also install here the Xen virtualization host and tools if you're running something like QBOS, for example. Uh, and by default, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed comes pre-installed with AppArmor. But you can also decide for SE Linux if you want to do that. So SE Linux is available here. And some of the packages are already pre-installed. But if you want to use it, you can install, of course, the container SE Linux and also the policies and then remove AppArmor if you don't want to use that. Then we have some other tools like console tools and some other uh, things like documentations and containers and micro OS. Micro OS is one of the acquisitions uh, of SUSE Linux, I think, and it has been integrated now here also in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Now, this is just to show you the availability of packages. It's really nice and how it's presented and how you can uh, configure and install the packages here. It's really well, uh, well implemented. So I'm going to cancel out from here for a sec and go back to the Yast tool. Now, these are the interesting, the most interesting uh, tools to me in the software category. Now, in the hardware category here, there is not really much to see except, you know, for hardware information, system keyboard layout, the scanner, the sound and the printer. Uh, nothing really fancy here. It's just standard tools that you can conf uh, where you can configure your hardware. Uh, the other interesting thing is, for example, the bootloader. So here for the system, if I click here, we can change uh, basically the bootloader settings, which is Grub. Uh, Grub is used by default. Now, uh, Grub on OpenSUSE Thunderbolt supports um, secure boot. So I tried actually to install uh, the Thunderbolt also on my laptop, which has secure boot enabled, and I was able to install it just fine. When you boot the first time Thunderbolt uh, on, on secure boot, it's going to ask to import the keys, and then you will be able to install Thunderbolt uh, on secure boot absolutely fine. I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do this on Arch uh, in the future. 
it's a little more complex than I want it to be, uh, but uh, I'm going to do that definitely. And, and then we can move over here uh, for the kernel, uh, kernel parameters, where you can define the kernel parameters uh, for the command line here. You can also uh, set the resolution if you don't want to have automatically detected by grab. For example, if you have a high DPI display like me, you can select a resolution here. And you can also choose a console theme if you want to do that. And also we have here the bootloader options here, the timeout and so on. So it's very nice to have here and it's fairly simple to configure. Now I'll go back here to the YAST tool. We have also the date and time, kernel settings, nothing really major here. Network settings, this might be interesting, uh, you know, if you want to configure your host name and stuff like that. So you can go in here and do that. Now the services manager is also something interested if you are... Uh, you know, if you need to check your, uh, your system logs, especially. So there is a log uh, section anyway of the YAST tool, which I'm going to show you in a sec. But this one is also very interesting. So now it's reading the service status for the graphical interface. So it's going to basically check what services are running right now. So you can see we have tons of services running right now. So if I choose, for example, one, let me go here to, for example, to Firewall D, which is pre-installed in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And I open this up here by clicking show details. Uh, you can see it's showing you uh, the details of the service plus a couple of logs here. So you can see here it says it's active. This is basically the same thing that you would see when you type in the terminal system CTL status uh, firewall D. So this is one place where you can see it basically in your YAST tool. And you can check the status also for other packages as well or for other targets as well. And here you can also stop the services or restart them and so on. Now let's get out from here. And here we have again uh, the possibility on the network services to change our host names or the IPv or the IP addresses on the hosts file. We can configure actually uh, a mail server. This is because actually I installed this. It was not pre-installed by default. And we have some other options here for NIS client, NTP configuration, if you want to do that. We have also user logon and iSCSI initiator here, and also some VPN gateways and clients. This actually came because I installed the mail server. And we have also the option here to connect to uh, Azure, to Windows domain membership. So this is something interesting to have here on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Then on the security and users uh, section here, we have AppArmor that you can configure. We have the firewall, which uh, you know uh, you can do also on the terminal, of course. Um, I would probably do that because I'm used to it. But here you have a graphical, a graphical interface where you can actually configure your firewall. So for example, if you go to the home zone here, you can see we have these services already available. On the public zone here, we have these services available. And we can choose some of these and add them or remove these ones and then click accept to configure your firewall. So it's pretty handy to have it here as well. Let's go back here. We have a security center here where we can basically change the security of the system. So we're going to take a minute here to read the current configuration. So here we have our security overview for the system. We can go ahead here and, you know, uh, these are the things that we should be paying attention to. Um, I didn't do it yet anyway because I installed it just a couple of days ago. Uh, and then if you want to have more help, you can go here and you will see what they do or you can configure them directly from this menu, which is nice. We have some um, predefined security configurations right now. It's custom, but you can choose workstation, uh, roaming device or network server if you want to do that. And you can always have here the help menu to help you out decide uh, for, you know, for which profile you can, you can decide. For example, um, workstation here for a computer connected to any type of network, including the Internet, roaming device for a laptop, network server for a computer that provides any types of service. Then we have the password settings. So the password settings, is, these are basically the, um, uh, the parameters that you find normally in the login devs file under the Etsy directory in the system. And you can assign basically here the minimum accept, acceptable password length, uh, you know, the password encryption method and the minimum and maximum age and the days before uh, expires uh, warning. So, you know, how many days before the password expires you get a warning for the system that you need to change the password. So if you're running a server, definitely change this. I'm, I wouldn't leave them as default. And then we have here the boot settings. 
you know what to do with interpretation of control alt delete it's going to reboot the system or system hibernation what it does we have login settings here uh, basically the delay uh, that you have to wait if you're logging incorrectly into your system uh, user addition this is for the group uh, ids and the gids and the user ids and the other settings here are for the file permissions this is interesting here it's now too easy we have easy secure and paranoid if you want to know what they do here you can click the help menu and it's going to tell you what they do uh, so basically easy most of the system files uh, that are only readable by root insecure are modified so other users can also read these files and you know if you want to have the highest level of security you should go to paranoid with with it you must decide which users are able to run x application and set uids programs so this is a, an overview of the security settings here and we have also configuration for sudo and also for user management uh, nothing major here we have um, tools for virtualization so this option was not there at the beginning because i had to install the tools before it appeared and if you go here to install hypervisor and tools you're going to be asked to choose between uh, xen or kvm or you can install both as well and once you have done that it's going to take care of installing that for you with all uh, packages and also um, uh, software for the ufi systems etc etc so it's really nicely done then we have here the release notes and on the mesh here we have uh, the system log now the first time you click this is going to tell you whether you want to merge these two together because it's going to read the system d journal d uh, log and when you click here it's going to basically pull up your so i'm going to click yes here and i thought i did that already but seems to be not so the log now opens up here you can see we have our log here that you can explore you can search for you can change filters or you can refresh we have also here an alternative option what is this well this is actually interesting this is actually one of the options where you can choose, for example, another display manager. So choosing another display manager on Thunderbird is a little different than we do, for example, on Arch. Uh, so, for example, you would go here and or you can do it actually from the terminal as well. There are commands for that and you can choose another display manager. For example, if I click here, the default display manager right now, it's set to STDM. But if I click in on Edit. Uh, you can see here we have choices about the console or XDM, which is also coming pre-installed. So if you would install GDM or LightDM, you would, go, you would have to go in here and then change the display manager directly from here. Or you can do it from the terminal as well uh, with another command, which I don't remember right now, but there is a command for that. And uh, let's get out from here. And then, of course, we come to one of the most probably, uh, you know, nice features of Tumbleweed, which are system snapshots now let me click this and uh, you can see here we have all the snapshots that uh, snapper actually done in my system so we have tons of these right now because i did a lot of updates and installed a lot of packages but uh, if you've seen some of the videos i did on snapper and batterfs you know how they work you basically uh, the snapshots you are taking pre and post updates uh, and they're gonna basically take a photo of the system and if you select one for example here on the firewall and i click here show changes it's gonna it's gonna tell you what actually changed in the system when i did this action and if something was wrong or something didn't go correctly or i need to roll back i can always select the files here or select some of these and then click restore selected now this is really handy and it's really one of the powerful feature of the butterfs file system now here it's very well implemented in, in tumbleweed uh, OpenSUSE i think was one of the first one to implement actually butterfs snapshots with snapper a snapper i think was actually developed by one of the uh, OpenSUSE developers or the SUSE uh, Enterprise Linux developers, I'm not sure there, um, but it's really well implemented. And you know, if you're running a server, uh, this is definitely a nice feature to have. Um, so let me get out of here. So these are the snapshots that I have in my system. And also, uh, pointing up here on the ButterFS file system, if I go to uh, back to the partitioner here, uh, right here. And let me click yes here. I just want to see the partitions on my system. So when I install this, this you can see, this is the configuration of the main machine I have. So I have four hard drives in here. And when I installed the system, I was asked actually very simply to install on one disk and that's it. And then it's going to be configuring everything by itself. But the thing is, I want to, I want to actually have an LVM with ButterFS on the first two disks. And then I created later on an LVM to, uh, to the other two disks for data on my system. So... I cannot show you this here because it's uh, you know it's already installed. But I prepared a virtual machine here with the installer open, 
let me go there and i'm sorry for the resolution this is not the greatest resolution but the installer does not allow me to have idpi here so usually when you install this this is what you're gonna see so you're gonna have one drive and uh, you know it's gonna tell you i'm gonna do this and this and this so you can click the details here and you can see it's gonna create here the efi partition the swap partition and then how many sub volumes it's gonna create for your machine and by the way it's gonna install grab here both for ufis and also legacy systems but what i did i went to guided setup and then here, if you have multiple disks, you will be asked which disk you want to actually use for the installation. So if you have multiple disks, as in my case, for example, I had four disks, you can actually select maximum three during the installation. So I selected the first two SSDs uh, by checking the box there and then click and then I clicked enable uh, logical volume management. And then I went on and created the BadRFS LVM. Then here you can select, of course, also another, um, you know, another file system if you want to do that. And you can also propose a separate uh, home partition and a separate file system as well for the home partition so it was very uh, easy actually to, to set up the system and this installer it's really intuitive and it's really well done and you know just then you click next here and uh, you go back to the basically to the first screen and you click next here then you basically are going to install the system I already selected the desktop environment and it's going to now synchronize uh, with the internet you're just going to choose here uh, your region in my case it's right now switzerland and you're going to be asked to make a user here so i'm just going to create one very quickly now one thing that you need to be aware here is that, is that automatically uh, you're going to have here automatic logging so i'm just going to check this off and then click next and then it's going to analyze the system and then it's going to install the system for you so I'm just going to click install here and click install. So this is going to take normally like uh, five to maybe eight minutes, something like that. And uh, once it's done, you're going to be, uh, you know, greeted by the STDM display manager and you can log into KDE. Now, uh, let me go back here to uh, my uh, desktop. And let me close this. While it's installing, I want to show you also something else. Let me close actually the log here. There you go. Um, let me go back here to the software management. And I'm going to go here to the patterns again. And I want to show you here the Sway uh, window manager. This is something that many of you ask me also on the channel if I'm going to do a tutorial about Sway. I'm going to do that. Uh, I am not so familiar with Sway yet because for those of you who don't know, Sway is basically uh, the i3 um uh, replacement for wayland so it's a wayland uh, i3 window manager basically but i don't know wayland that well yet so i'm still learning it uh, it's quite different uh, than xwork and it has still some issues but eventually in the future it's going to replace xwork nobody knows exactly when and nobody knows exactly if it will uh, but that's the idea behind it um, and I wanted to show you this because actually OpenSUSE offers uh, Sway in one of his group packages here. And I don't want to install it now on the, my main machine because uh, otherwise you cannot see that because I have to log out and log in again. I want to do it on the virtual machine. So I'll pause the video here and I'll wait until the uh, machine is uh, done installing there. And then I'm going to be back here with you guys and we're going to install Sway. I'm going to show you how you can install it. And then we're going to switch to it in our machine. So there we go, the machine now finished installing and let me configure this very quickly. Uh, I will just here change the display resolution. I'm going to try again to make it uh, 4K here with 200% scaling. There you go. Yeah, as you can see, then everything is small. But like I said, I don't use the environment variable because otherwise it's going to mess up the, the dual display. Although this is a virtual machine, actually, it does not really matter. I could use the variable and it's going to work fine. And let me go back here to key. And there you go. So let me just increase the size of the panel uh, to see the icons a little better. Oh, there, you go. there you go. So let's go back to the settings. And well, we could actually open up Yast immediately here and we need to authenticate and let's close this and go full screen here. So it's easier to see. Now let's go to software management here and I'm going to show you how you can install the Sway uh, window manager. So let's go to uh, patterns and then select 
these two groups here, OpenSUSE, Way, and Sway, Tiling, Wayland, Compositor. And then we can click Accept. Now, these are all the packages that are going to be installed, so we can click Continue. And it's going to download here. You can see the downloading 120 packages, and, uh, and then it's going to, of course, install them. Then once it's installed, we can log out. And we can select from the STDM Display Manager the, the Sway Window Manager. Now, Sway, as I said before, it's a Wayland drop-in replacement for i3. And it should be compatible with uh, the three config file. Um, so everything you have in there, if you want to try it out, it should actually work. But it's based on Wayland. So this is new and uh, there has also new commands there. You cannot use the X render command or stuff like that. These are meant for XOR. So let's click finish here and close the window. And let's log out here and click log out. And now let's choose here uh, Sway and enter our password and hit enter. Now, this is way the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed version. Now, if I hit mod enter, Alacrity is opening up here. So the first thing we need to do here is to copy over the configuration file from the ATC directory. So we can first create the directory here by typing in mkdir, then dot config slash sway. Then we can copy over the configuration file by typing in cp slash etc slash sway and then config and we're going to copy this under dot config slash sway there you go now let me change the display resolution of course here we don't have xorg so the, the commands are completely different so we need to type in, in here sway msg output then first mode it's going to be 3840 per 2160 and the scale is going to be 2 and of course, invalid output because I didn't tell where. So I need to put in here my display name, which is virtual-1. There you go. And now you can see it's scaling correctly. So this is the basic configuration of Sway in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. If you want to experiment with that, this is how you can do it. Now, if you hit mod D, you have here the D run uh, already there. And we can open up here, for example, our Firefox browser which is opening up there. So with the usual commands, we can move this to workspace number two. So mod shift two, you can see the chameleon there, it's blue. So the we have a window in there. So we hit mod two and here we have here our uh, Firefox browser. So the green means the focus window and the blue one is not the focus window, of course. So let's go back in here. Now let's have a look at the configuration file very quickly. So let's type in vim.config slash sway slash config. Then you can see this is the i3 basically configuration file uh, with uh, maybe some changes for the packages because as you can see here it's using here another background there are other commands um, and we have here the alacrity also that can be configured here with the alacrity yaml file we scroll down here we have several other configurations for the workspaces where you can see the bind scene commands are the same also here and it's using the same, the same structure. We have also here, let's go a little bit more forward here. We have here for the resizing is also the same. The bar right now, it's not, it's commented out, but we could also comment it and configure it, but I'm not gonna do it this in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you here that you can work actually with Sway. And you can see here in the end, we have also two snapping directories. One is the uh, config.d directory under sway in the home directory which we don't have we need to we could actually create this or we could use also the snapping directory in our configuration file under the etsy directory so this is you know something that you can try out if you want to try out sway on tumbleweed this is how you can install it and as i said i might do a tutorial about sway a little bit later in the future because it's kind of a different beast compared to um you know to xorg uh, wayland is completely new compositor and i'm not that familiar with it yet so this is a little bit of a bigger overview about open SUSE tumbleweed it's a great distribution in my opinion is really underrated and if you try it out let me know in the comments below what you think about it is it going to replace Arch for me? Uh, probably not, because I really love Arch. It's uh, approach uh, community distribution. Uh, and I think the amount of packages that you find in Arch is really unrivaled. You can really find everything on Arch um, 
through the AUR as well uh, and is something that I think for me personally it's irreplaceable but again I'm not running a server here on, on you know on my desktop machine but OpenSUSE I think it's a definitely great distribution and if you are using the Leap uh, version of OpenSUSE you can definitely use that as a server it's a very solid server I think Linode is also offering that um, as a server in one of its images so if you try this out let me know in the comments below how it's working for you and if you like it and if you're using already uh, OpenSUSE since a long time let me know why you love it I'm also curious to know uh, your opinion and if you have any question about the video let me also know in the comments below as usual I will try to answer you as soon as I can and if you want to support my work guys you can do so by becoming a patron as you probably already know I'm doing a live webinar every month on patreon now we are focusing on one uh, topic on Linux or if you want you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well thank you so much for watching the video guys I'll see you very very soon in the next one